Good Memorial Day weekend, everyone. Uh, it is Saturday the 27th, and good afternoon, everyone. We have some stuff to talk about with uh, the tropical the tropical update. Uh, we have the predictions that uh, we put out for supporters on Facebook and YouTube back in middle of March. We're going to share that with you all uh, in a few minutes. We're going to take a look at a major typhoon that's happened out in the Western Pacific, and plus a little uh, possible possibility of a tropical uh, disturbance popping up just off the Carolina coast, but very rainy and uh, gloomy conditions for, for this Memorial Day weekend over across the Mid-Atlantic. Uh, so we're going to get into that. But first, click that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. It is free. And please comment uh, where you're from. All right, hopefully you guys can see this okay, uh, but we're going to have an El Nino update as it is a big driver um, in what happens in parts of the Atlantic Basin uh, for hurricane season. And as you can see here, we have uh, we have uh, a major, we well, not major, but we have El Nino developing, of course, uh, out here into the Pacific, and it's very warm, uh, starting to get bare, very warm. Uh, getting out of those three a uh, three year La Nina, which is cooler than average uh, uh, ocean can, ocean surface conditions across this area. Now, what you see on your screen is a sea surface temperature anomalies. The the warmer colors means above average, and the cooler uh, areas is below average, of course. And you can see the western or the basically all the Atlantic is above average for this time of year, even through the Gulf of Mexico. Now. What you're probably wondering, well, what does El Nino have to do with Atlantic hurricane season? Well, during El Nino events, uh, uh, El Nino can reduce Atlantic tropical storm and hurricane activity. Reason being is it increased winds in the upper atmosphere over the tropical Atlantic. So it could be increased westerlies across the Atlantic. Now, there's going to be certain areas that I think will have more, be more prone to tropical activity. And let me show you. So there's going to be some, a couple areas, I think, that's going to have a little bit more activity than normal. I think it's going to be in this general vicinity, and we may have a lot more homegrown tropical uh, systems this year with fronts basically coming across and stalling across basically maybe the Gulf Stream maybe. And tropical systems can develop off these uh, frontal boundaries that come on to kind of stall out. So I think this is a zone here across Central Atlantic. And then basically along the East Coast here, I think those are going to be the prime target areas this year. Now. If we're going to have a below average year, I think we're going to I think the Caribbean is going to be well below average in parts um, for hurricanes or any tropical systems, but I think that's the area will be below average and those areas I circled in the central Atlantic and then just off basically North Carolina to the southeastern coast here of the Atlantic Ocean here is going to have uh, probably more activity uh, than normal. Now, my biggest concern is if these westerlies or the wind shear slight, or slackens up and a tropical wave comes across, there's a lot more, there's a lot more dynamics, uh, favorable conditions that can happen across uh, parts of Atlantic into the Caribbean. If that happens, I think with the sea surface temperatures running way above normal, um, if any conditions get favorable for a tropical wave to come across, um, this thing could spawn into uh, some type of major event possibility. Uh, that is my biggest concern. But El Nino is going to be the biggest driver in suppressing uh, the hurricane season this year uh, versus the past few years. So here is my official forecast. This was put out there middle of March for our supporters. They had a big write-up on what could happen uh, this year. Um, so now it's going public. Uh, as we get the Atlantic Basin, it starts June 1st. The, uh, the hurricane season starts June 1st across the Atlantic Basin and then across the 
uh, Western Pacific. It started May, May 15th. Uh, so, 2023 hurricane outlook. So, I think there's going to be 11 to 14 named storms, four to six hurricanes, and one to three major hurricanes. That's category three or higher across the Atlantic Basin. Now, you probably wonder, well, how many is there average? So, uh, normals during a ter typical hurricane season, named storms right around 14 to 15 or so. Seven hurricanes, that's normal. Major hurricanes at three is at three. So I think we're going to have an average to a little bit below average year on uh, for hurricane season. So like I said, we are expecting El Nino to develop, which it already has been doing. Our current thinking is there won't be any uh, really above normal areas. There will be some increased activity across the central Atlantic and across the eastern, uh, probably the southeastern coast of the Atlantic, right around, right along the Gulf Stream there, I think there's going to be a little bit more activity in those areas. So if we go, what I just showed you, uh, basically European monthly for summer indicates a moder minor to moderate El Nino will be present by mid to late summer. So our forecast off this we have an ensemble years of 2002, 2009, 2015, um, 2018. Now, out of all those years, 2015, we put in there because 2015 was a major El Nino year, and we could get to that point. So that's part of our blends that we use to make this outlook. So also in models there's always a tendency to overestimate the water temperature in the enzo regions during during this past spring which it has in a little pocket across uh, just south of hawaii or southwest of hawaii but overall uh it is el nino's rapidly developing across the area so the European model percent uh, per forecast suggests that MJO will be in phase five to six from June through late August as well. So basically, in summary here, average to slightly below average tropical activity this year for 2023 uh, due to possible a weak to moderate El Nino that will develop, uh, that has been developing, um, and get to possibly even a strong El Nino by the time we get to peak season, which is September. Uh, right around September, middle September is the peak hurricane season for the Atlantic. All right. Like I said, I've shared all this with supporters back in March. Nothing has really changed. The only thing I did update was the major hurricane. I, I, my biggest concern is if... That wind shear kind of slackens up, a, a strong tropical tropical wave comes off the Atlantic, or we have some homegrown stuff in the Gulf of Mexico or off the off the uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, and, and Georgia coast, uh, especially along that Gulf Stream. There, uh, we could have some homegrown uh, tropical activity in that part of the world or that part of the area. Okay. All right, so across the Carolinas and the southeastern coast, you're probably wondering, what is going on? Why are we having all this gloomy weather? Here we are going into Memorial Day weekend, and uh, we have this, this big, sprawling uh, low pressure here, frontal low, that is, um, really spinning up and just shoving moisture back into the Carolinas and the, and the southeast. Uh, lots of rain out through here uh, over this weekend. This is straight from the National Hurricane Center. Like I said, we have that frontal low, but there could there is a small chance that this thing could develop into some kind of a subtropical tropical uh, wave here. So this is what the um, this is actually down. This has been downgraded to zero percent chance of cyclone formation in the next forty eight hours. It says a non tropical low pressure system located about one hundred fifty miles south of Charleston, South Carolina continues to produce gusty winds and disorganized showers and thunderstorms over portions of the southeastern United States and the western Atlantic Ocean. This low is expected to remain a frontal system while it moves northward and inland over the Carolinas tonight or early Sunday. So basically, this is going to be just a big nuisance uh, for this Memorial Day weekend. Lots of rain. Lots of rain 
across the Carolinas and uh, the South. There's some of those rain totals. Uh, Florida, South Florida looks like it's going to get in some action here and then on some uh, showers and storms. But here's that big uh, uh, frontal low that's coming up towards North Carolina. Lots of rain, two to four inches, possibly locally five to six across the area. And as we get some upsloping that happens across North Carolina, uh, some effects of that, which will enhance uh, some of the rainfall rates. So probably three to five, maybe locally six to seven up here in the mountains of North Carolina. Now, back here into Texas, man, they have had an incredible week, lots of severe weather. Lots of complexes of storms coming across the area area this week. So uh, they've been dealing with a lot of drought across uh, western Kansas, all the way through western Oklahoma, through western Texas. So this is just great news. We hate to see the severe weather, uh, but we are getting some very beneficial uh, rain across this area uh, over the last week to 10 days, and it's going to continue over the next few days. A look at this monster that basically ravaged Guam over the past couple days. It continues its wester, westerly track about 15 to 20 miles an hour or so. But this is a major, uh, basically a major typhoon. This sucker hit 180 mile an hour sustained winds. Would probably gust up to 200 plus uh, across this, across the, basically right around the core. Uh, the eye wall of this system. So this has hit a record for the lowest pressure in the month of May for any tropical system typhoon. I believe it got down to like 897 or 98 millibars at one point. It's just on this crazy, crazy stuff. So the other two uh, typhoons that were on record uh, since 1950 that had uh, max sustained winds of 180 was Phyllis back in 1958 and Damry of two in 2000. So just unbelievable. I mean, this is just this is amazing what this thing, the power of these things, and uh, the eastern or the uh, the that part of the world uh, that's been kind of quiet over the past uh, few years. So super typhoon is it is it Mawar? Hopefully I'm saying that right. Mawar. Um, this that's the name of this system. Continues to ravage its way across uh, the Pacific there, uh, just east of or just west of Guam now. Um, just keeps tracking west at about uh, ten to fifteen, possibly twenty miles an hour. All right, that wraps up the tropics and uh, a brief look at what's happening this uh, Memorial Day weekend across the nation here. So uh, just in summary, uh, 20, our 2023 hurricane outlook, this, like I said, this was uh, out for supporters on Facebook and members on YouTube back in the middle of uh, March. Uh, so nothing's really changed. Uh, so 11 to 14 named storms, four to six hurricanes one to three major hurricanes for the Atlantic Basin. Uh, this is what we are expecting uh, for this year. So thank you all for watching. Like I said, hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button. It is free to join. Also, uh, please uh, share this with, with your friends and family, especially along the Gulf Coast, the Eastern Seaboard. And uh, comment where you're from. Uh, so enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. Thank you for watching. Uh, be safe out there.